Hello, friends and adventurers, and welcome back to Sally Cat Plays Exile 3 Ruined World. So, I was considering going back to the Lorelei region and exploring some towns after our adventures in Marish and the Chasm of Screams, but you know what? This map to the Black Halberd mentions north of Kalok into the mountains. We can find a really excellent weapon. And since I'm right by Kalok, it's endgame equipment, likely to be tough to acquire, but I think I can probably handle it. Of course, I will retreat back to civilization if I start taking way too much damage or picking up too much loot to carry. Just exploring the coastline for now. And finding nothing interesting. Oh, now there's a swamp. But since the map mentioned into the mountains, I should probably be focusing on that terrain. You know, once I finish filling out my empty map. A shadow flits across the ground towards you. You look up to see what cast it, and gasp. It's a massive lizard, 80 feet from head to tip at least. It circles over you, looking down at you, and then flies east over the mountains. It's gone. Interesting. The sight of this desolate, blasted valley sends chills up your spines. It's dark and lifeless, filled with bones and reeks of sulfur. There are also many lizard scales, some of them as much as a foot wide. You feel like you're being watched. The bones are mostly, but not all, of animals. There's also humanoid bones, and the remains of some large beasts with six legs you're not sure you recognize. Huh. This seems like it could be dangerous. Lair of Koth. Ooh, I think we might have just found some dragons. Well, time for a distraction from our distraction. The entrance to this subterranean fort is blocked off by a truly massive portcullis. Dozens of two-inch thick steel bars, set close together, make it clear that forcing your way in isn't an option. Unfortunately, nobody seems likely to let you in. Aww. But Koth is my favorite of the three remaining dragons. Well, I don't know. Sulphurus is pretty cool. Lair of Koth. Disruption of my solitude will be greeted with lethal force. Koth is an introvert with a large library. I can relate. You are at the top of a deep pit. A dragon could simply leap down it, and claw marks indicate one has, many times. You, on the other hand, could, with difficulty, climb down it. You return to the bottom of the pit, climb back up. No, let's keep exploring, because we are now in the lair of Sulphurus. Huh. It would seem the dragons are hanging out together instead of separately this time around. Beast pen. Okay. You suddenly hear a deep, powerful voice. You are intruding in the domain of Sulphurus the dragon. I grant you an audience to see me. You may enter. The portcullis is to the south, open silently. Huh. So Sulphurus calls us intruders and yet invites us to come in. Caverns of Sulphurus. Insolent humans will not be tolerated. Well, best behavior, folks. And lava. Lava. 
Let's see if I can avoid triggering the hilarious Ow, I stepped in lava pain sound from triggering today. You see an enormous cavern to the south, which conforms very closely to what people say hell is like. It's a massive, swirling cauldron of sulfur, magma, and flames. In the center, you think you can make out a huge basalt island. And bones. Lots of bones. And darts for some reason. They're not marked as not mine, so... Yoink! I figure there's an equal chance of them being... Well, of it. There's only one of it. Equal chance of it being a completely garbage weapon, or a dart of returning. As one would expect to find cool loot in a dragon slayer. Hey, Sulphurus, how have you been? You stand, quaking, before a specimen of the largest and mightiest species on the planet. A dragon. Sulphurus, queen of lizard kind, towers before you, staring at you with ancient, fiery eyes. She breathes deeply, and the thick sulphurous gas makes you gag. I am Sulphurus. Her words are slow and majestic, and when she speaks, you can easily see her multitudes of massive teeth. I lead the return of the dragons to the surface world. I have allowed you to enter so we can speak of important matters. Only three dragons are here, me and my siblings, Athran and Koth. There are more of us, though, and one by one I will bring them here. Okay. My sister, Athran, has recently had a brood of dragonlings, and is uninterested in our war. She looks irritated. Still, hopefully soon her paranoia will disperse, and she will join the necessary struggle. Koth's wisdom is infinite, and his hatred of the humans is almost as great as mine. The foul humans of the Empire slew many of our kind, and dispersed the rest. I wish to lead our triumphant return to the surface, and to exact a grim vengeance on the Empire. This leads me, however, to the suspicions of the exiles. She glares at you. Do not ask about our vengeance, puny human. She emits a dry, flaming chuckle. Some exiles believe we have caused the plagues of monsters that beset the world. We did not. Our vengeance against the Empire has not yet begun. The enemy of our enemy is our friend. That is why we wish to reassure exile. Also, we wish to enlist your help. We wish your aid in dealing with certain irksome pests. First, go to the northeast cave of my lair, enter it, and deal with the pests within. When you have slain them, come back and ask me of them again. Okay. So the dragons are interested in contracting us for pest control. But first, I wish to explore a little more. Excess treasure storage. In other words, a place we are probably never going to see except for maybe a quick side save well, when I decide to <laughs> tick off the dragon and risk horrible death. Hmm. 
And another pit leads us to the lair of Athron. Caves of Athron. Anyone harming any of my brood will be slain without mercy. Self-defense or no. Okay, noted. You approach the barrier. It flashes red as you get close, and seems to grow more powerful. You aren't sure how to get through it. Huh. Lair of Athrun. Those unwelcome will be treated without mercy. And that just pops us up back out right here. So yeah, we already know that Athrun is unlikely to greet visitors. So I guess we can go deal with that request from Sulphurus. barrier. And what kind of pests we dealing with here? You see one of the fiercest monsters you've ever seen. It's like a six-legged pit bull, five feet high, and pure muscle and teeth. Worst, its head is able to swivel 360 degrees. It could bite you and shred you to pieces just by spinning its head. Ooh, hi. Let's get a little scrying going. Alien Beast. Level 20, 100 health, not too bad. Fair bit of armor and lots of skill. It eh, can't be that tough, can it? I thought this one looked a little beefier, but maybe it's just a... Uh different rotations and backgrounds of the things. Okay, they are not taking a whole lot of damage from me. Eat wall of blades. I have a Wand of Death, but I don't have the actual kill spell. I'll have to fix that at some point. Oh! Oh, I missed that when I was reading the information screen. They can poison me with a bite. Great. Okay, Wall of Blade seems a pretty effective way to deal with those things. I'm pretty sure there isn't anything special in here, no. Okay, so, pesky alien beasts, what's the deal? As you can see, these alien beasts, as the humans call them, are mildly annoying. We know you fight the monsters. We have had difficulties with the beasts. I wish to make you a sword to exterminate them. Okay. 
I have a habit of helping humans. It is unpleasant, but necessary. We wish alien beasts dead. I will make you a weapon to help slay them. To do this, I need two things. Instructions for how to make it, and a bar of special metal. Go to my siblings, Koth and Athron. They will give you these things. Then return to me. Okay. Fetch quest continues. Well, this is the fetching part of it. The first part was just uh, kill things and come back. Kind of want to explore this side tunnel. Sulfurous Lair is huge. I bet she's hiding something cool in it. Aha! Uh -huh. When you get close, the bars slowly rise up into the ceiling. Someone or something decided to let you in. Apparently, Sulphurus has talked to her siblings and persuaded them to allow us in. You cross over the bridge into the lair of Koth. He is reputed by legend to be a secretive character, craving knowledge above all else. Farther in, you see bookshelves filled with thousands of arcane tomes, maintained and fetched by undead shades. Don't mind me just looking at all of the bookshelves. And the shades won't respond. They have one job, and it is not to help me. You find a recently inscribed series of scrolls, describing a spell to enchant a blade to make it work better against something called an alien beast. You can't cast the spell, but you memorize the ritual so you can relay it to Sulphurus. I kind of wish I couldn't have found that until Koth told me about it. Ooh, hello. You find a book of prayers, and what's more, it's a valuable one. You pick through it carefully, memorizing the intricate rituals and chants. Reading it, you learn the spell Ravage Spirit. Nice. That'll come in handy next time we uh, get surrounded by demons. You find a book filled with puzzles. They're strange, complicated puzzles, illuminated in gold paint on black pages. The more of the puzzles you see, the more they confuse you, and the more of your thoughts they occupy. Eventually, you put the book down. Ah, nuts. Okay, Pearl apparently is saved by either the Ring of Resistance or the Ivory Charm. Everybody else takes a level of dumbfound. Ooh, a few levels of dumbfound. I can only cast third level spells. Eww. You find a very useful book of alchemical concoctions. One in particular seems useful to you. It's a recipe for a potion of clarity, made using holly and grey mold. You can now make it. <sighs> if only I had holly. I have some grey mold. <laughs> You find a book of arcane rituals. You browse through it, looking for spells. But the more you look, the harder a time you have stopping. Eventually you pull yourself away, but not before the bizarre acts and beings described make you feel deranged. 
Well, at least that one didn't dumbfound me. I don't think it reduced my intelligence. You find a series of tomes, each describing a different sort of magical item. Browsing them, you learn a great deal about the sort of artifacts adventurers can find. One of you gets a higher item lore skill. Yay! You pull one of the books off the shelf and flip it open. Unfortunately, you have the ill luck of picking a book with a magical rune of protection inside. You find yourself somewhere else. Oop. Well, at least it didn't directly explode in our faces. Ah, the door is locked. Goodness. Why are my higher level spellcasters so much worse affected by the dumbfounding? Hmm. Not sure if I can actually get in there. You find a book of prayers, and what's more, it's a valuable one. You pick through it carefully, memorizing the intricate rituals and chants. Reading it, you learn the spell Avatar. Ooh, that could be fun later. Hello, Koth. Interesting empty space in here. Lightning arcs across the passage ahead of you keeping you from moving forward. Whatever tomes or treasures are beyond here, Koth doesn't want you to see any of them. Okay then. You encounter the dragon Koth, one of the most learned and secretive members of dragonkind. He is reading a scroll, carefully holding it in his claws. You have to wait five minutes for him to finish it before he deigns to speak with you. His voice is raspy and laced with contempt. I am Koth, humans. I study and learn, and the rest of the time I meditate on my hatred of humans. I know of worlds you cannot contemplate, and of facts of science so bizarre you cannot imagine. I can speak tongues thought lost to the earth. A hundred human minds could not encompass all that I have forgotten. Sulfras has convinced me, however, that a little of this should be shared with you. Athran is lost in the fuzzy-headed joys of the brood. Sulfras is focused and powerful. And that is all you are allowed to know. I despise humankind, especially the clump of petty monkeys that calls itself the Empire. But this is all irrelevant. Sulphurus has convinced me I must assist you in other matters by sharing with you. You may purchase a few spells from me. Woohoo! I am always eager to add to my trove. What is more, Sulphurus wants me to help you with this alien beast problem. The humans are set upon from all sides by sinister beasts. We approve of this. It fills dragonkind with joy. However, one of these types of creatures, the alien beasts, brings me and my siblings much inconvenience. The alien beasts can be killed by us, but only with difficulty, and not before they do serious damage. We know you battle these monsters, and believe... With help, you can make the beast problem decrease. That is why there is a ritual Sulphurus wishes me to teach you. Yep, found that. 
search my bookshelves. You will find what you need eventually. I have a tome which will teach you how to make a weapon to slay alien beasts, the culmination of months of thorough research on my part. Now go. I wish to waste no more time on mere humans. Alrighty then. Also do a few restore mines on Garnet so she can cast the unlocking spell. Okay, after three times of trying it, it's probably not going to work. So we'll just do magic map and see what I'm missing. Looks like either holding cells or perhaps treasure chambers of some sort. But again, I don't want to piss off the very large and toothy dragon. So we've got the ritual. Actually, it's a little bit faster to go the other way and access Athran's lair from outside. You approach Athran the Dragon's magical barrier, designed to give the mighty creature the privacy it craves. As you get close, a small gap appears in it. It would appear that you are, if not openly welcomed, at least allowed to enter. You stand at the entrance to the lair of Athran the Dragon. The cave has the expected claw-mark-ridden floor covered with scattered, dried scales. A thick lizard smell hangs in the passage. Some of the claw tracks, however, were made by smaller lizards than a full-size dragon, and some of the scales are smaller and softer, as if they came from a baby dragon. Athrin's broodlings may well be about. You hope they aren't hungry. Mm-hmm. This may actually be a good time to cast a stealth spell. Now, if the monster has already spotted me, I don't know how effective this will be. Never mind. And now I'm conveniently refreshed on spell points. Let's try this again. Ah, nuts. I do want to see if I can actually make use of the stealth spell for once in my exile playing. We've got the little stealth effect down here. <laughs> ah, hi. So rather than getting its own monster type, drakes are used as baby dragons. And remember, if we attack these guys in any way, Mama Athron will be pissed. Okay, Connie is getting ill from I don't know what now. Oh, maybe it's the asp gloves. I thought they would make my poison more effective, but maybe they are actually poisoning me. Whoopsie. Can I unequip? Unequip, okay. 
Good, good. They may be poisoning me, but at least they're not actually cursed. Ow. Did you really have to make us walk past all of your babies on the way to you? That seems foolish. Shouldn't you put yourself in between your children and any possible intruders? Among the amenities of the dragon's lair is this teleportal. Enter it. Somewhat safer territory now. And the lair, the line of chests right next to an attentive dragon is obvious schmuck bait. You stand before the legendary, secretive Atherin. She is dark gray-green, 80 feet from tip to tail, and completely lethal. She also looks undecided about whether to kill you or not. She snorts flame and speaks in a voice deepened by centuries of life. I am Athron. She idly gouges the floor with a claw two feet long. I raise my brood in peace. I am the first of my kind in a century to have children. However, circumstances force me to be protective. She snorts. My siblings wish to do battle. I wish for our people to survive. Which is more important? That is why I wish to help fight the alien beasts. The Empire captured them both to use against the Exiles. They will not admit this to you, but it drives them to get revenge. I do not believe their revenge has begun yet, but it will bring doom upon us for sure. We have enough trouble with the alien beasts. The Empire is the great enemy, but they must be treated cautiously. That is all I have to say on the subject. She growls. They are pests, who none can control. That is what Sulphurus and Koth say, anyway. They cannot control them. They wish them slain. I will assist in this. I will give you humans help again. The alien beasts are malevolent and sly. I can slay them, but I fear they may still sneak in and take my broodlings. In the middle chest nearby, you can find metal which may make a weapon to kill them. That is all the help I can give. Okay. So let's see what Sulphurus does when I search not the middle chest. This iron box is part of a dragon's treasure trove. That makes opening it a dangerous proposition at best. Try to get it open anyway. You open the box, and a high-pitched keen echoes through the caverns. Your attempt to steal from a dragon may be about to have a grisly result. It's got a bardiche, shield, and arrows. And I do have enough spell points to cast the identify spell once. Razor discs, necklace, great sword, great helm. Lots of gold and a potion. Lots of gold, necklace and ring. Steel razor discs, gold necklace. Magic pardiche, not bad. Base damage of 12, bonus 5. A bardiche is a cross between an axe and a spear. It is a pole with a curved blade attached to the side of the business end. Burning arrows. 
basically on fire, so they do extra fire damage. A Cursed Greatsword. Another Martyr's Shield. Unless that's one I picked up earlier. Steel Great Helm. No, I think uh, Martyr's Shield was in the chests here. Ring of Warmth gives Cold Resistance. And the Feldspar Charm is Cursed. That's not super impressive for a Dragon Sword. And now we've got Black Shades and an Angry Dragon. Let's not do that. It's not worth it. Oh, I guess I did miss what that potion was. Yeah, whatever. You open the box and find a bar of metal. It's very unusual metal. It's extremely light and not the slightest bit shiny. Ooh, sounds like another mithril. Metal lumps. And does this portal take us right back to the other one? Ah, dang. Really, there's no quick way back to the entrance without walking by the broodlings. You can't see me. You don't notice me. Darn it. I think if I'd pathed it just right, the stealth spell might actually have worked. And that is how you mostly avoid a nest of hungry dragonlings. So we've got the ritual, we've got the metal. And the ritual does not show up in our special items, it's just a plot flag. Oh, you know, I, I didn't actually use the Identify spell to investigate that dart and buckler I picked up. Pass. Sword. Aha! You give the metal to Sulphurus. She mumbles a spell while dipping it deep in the lava. She pulls it out. It's now a sword! She then casts the spell you learned from Koth's books. The spell seems to drain even Sulphurus. The sword glows blindingly brightly. She casts a final spell, and it cools. Silently, she hands the blade to you. Beast Slayer Blade. Badass. One-handed weapon, good base damage. Alien Beast Slayer. The true classic among swords. About three feet long, wide-bladed, the broadsword is the most commonly used blade. It's generally used for slashing, but can stab in a pinch. Meanwhile, the steel wave blade only has base damage of 10, and the magic broadsword has base damage of 9, so the beast slayer blade is quite good. Quite good indeed. 
Okay, 9 plus 5 is 14, and 12 plus 3 is 15. I'm going to slap that on just because I can. Connie's got a magic broadsword. Amethyst uses a mace. Stephen has a magic broadsword. Garnet uses a halberd. And Peridot could theoretically equip a magic broadsword, but let's be honest, her edged weapon skill is kind of crap. <laughs> As in, not even existing. Okay, so... Is that all that I can do with the dragons? Heh, yeah, I can also have Peridot cast magic map, why not? She doesn't have any sapphires, though. Yeah, you need a sapphire. Ooh, doesn't that look fun? So, nothing of interest here, just a tunnel for lava to drain out. Possibly something of interest in here? And I'm not actually sure if the game will let me get into this place that is decorated in the Vanatai style. Can't try, though. Looks like it's just an empty pocket. Interesting. This small door is solid steel, with tiny gold runes set into it. There's a small keyhole. However, you don't have any keys that fit. This is going to be a very difficult door to crack, if it's possible at all. Oh man, would I actually have to kill Sulphurus to get in here? I don't want to do that today. Not after she just gave me a cool sword. I'm going to walk around the other side of the cavern. Of course. And the same message, so this door is also magically locked. I'm betting that the doors here, assuming I can access them through this pres may or may not be solid wall, are also locked with a key that I don't have. So the mysteries shall elude me for now. Onwards! <laughs> <laughs> 